so today I'm going to show you how I made this marbled plate um, with a fluted edge. It's being glaze fired. Um, I mixed some blue stained clay in with some white stoneware and this is what it turned out like and I'll show you how I got this marbled finish on it. What I really like about this particular technique, I made it by slab rolling, and what I really like about it is that at the edge you get this really beautiful marbling layer, layered effect which looks a bit, reminds me of the layers of a tree. So the first thing that I do is I shape my two colours of clay into two blocks that are about an inch and a half thick and about the diameter of a loaf of bread I guess. And with this clay I stained one piece of the clay with, I think it was turquoise blue, and the other clay is just the white stoneware clay. And with the wire clay cutter I then slice each of the blocks of clay into thinner slices. As you can see, like I say, it's a bit like slicing a loaf of bread and I do that with both of the pieces. Then when they're all sliced up, I stack the colours on top of one another, alternating the colours, so you end up with a nice coloured sandwich. Once I've done that, I slam it down on the work surface a few times just to compress the clay together so that the slabs stick together. Then once it's in a nice compacted block, I wedge the clay in one direction just a few times. And then I just check and see what the, how the clay is blending together. You don't want to wedge it too much because then you start losing the definition of the marbling. So then once I've checked, the, checked it, I turn it around and I start wedging it in the other direction. Again, just a few times. And have a look. And then finally, pat, pat it together so it's into a, a ball shape. And then once again, you change the direction. So you're wedging for a third time in another direction. Like that. And then it's important not to overdo it with the wedging because you will lose detail in the marbling if you wedge it too much. It'll just mix it in completely and make one colour. Um, so once it's wedged, just press it down, compress it with your hand. That's, this just makes it easier to start rolling it out with a rolling pin if it's a little bit flattened already. And then I just roll it with a rolling pin. Um, Sometimes what I do is I'll put a piece of plywood on either side of the clay to make sure that the clay is rolling out of an even thickness or you can also buy little guides, uh, little plastic guides which you pop on the end of the rolling pin which will um, stop, the, stop the clay from being rolled out too thin um, and also make it of an even, even thickness uh, but I didn't use any, either of those on, on this occasion. Then, once the slab has been rolled out and I'm happy with the thickness, what I do is I just use a plate. It's, there's nothing special about this plate, this is just a regular kitchen plate. And I just use it as a guide for making a relatively, uh, relatively even circle shape in the clay, just cutting around it. I cut about a centimetre um, wider than the plate itself. It doesn't have to be too precise, but it's just to make it a bit more circular than it was. 
Then I just tidy it up a little bit once again with the rolling pin. Just to get out any ridges from the plate. And then using a rubber rib, just compress the clay down a little bit and smooth it out. And then this weird looking mushroom setup is actually, it's a banding wheel plus an old glaze carton and then a plaster mould perched on top. And I just set it up like that because it's about the right height for me to work at. And there, so you lift up the clay slab and drape it over the plaster mould. I've made a video about how to make plaster moulds, they're very easy to make, so I'll put a link to that in this video too. So you drape the clay over the plaster mould and then just start shaping it however you like really. Um, you can have it flush against the mould if you like, but with this one I wanted it to be fluted at the edge. So you just shape it as, it, as, you, as you feel like. And then once it's shaped, use the rubber rib to uh, smooth out the clay and compress it down a little. Whilst the clay's still soft, I try and smooth as much of the clay down as I can with a rubber rib. You can't do all of it whilst it's like this, just because of the shape of the, of the bowl. Um, and what I do, once I've compressed as much of it down and smoothed as much of it out as I can, I will cover this loosely in a plastic bag and then leave it overnight. Um, say I would say about 12 hours. The clay will become, it's not quite leather hard, but it's hard enough so that you can actually just pop the, pop the bowl off the mould and it'll keep its shape. So once it's off the mould, you can tidy it up. I didn't actually film the tidying up process because it's a bit tedious to watch. Um, and it's basically what you see me doing here is the tidying up process. The only difference is that I use a sharp knife, a crafting, well, it's a Stanley knife, um, to tidy up the edges, just to take any rough irregular irregularities out of the uh, edge of the bowl. And then the rest of it is just tidying it up with a, a rib, a rubber rib, just to make it as smooth as, as possible. And then when it's dry, when it's bone dry, bisque fire it and then clear glaze it and then glaze fire it and then you have your finished piece. And once the piece has been glaze fired, the contrast between the turquoise blue and the white clay will be much more um, intense. The difference in colour will be much more contrasting like this. <laughs>